So one of the big lingering questions about the forthcoming iPhone 8 is, will it include wireless charging? Today, we learned that Disney Research has developed a method of wirelessly transmitting power throughout a room. Joining us to talk about the science behind wireless charging is physics professor and Wired.com contributor, Rhett Elaine. Welcome back to the show, Rhett. Hi, thank you for having me. So we chatted about this earlier, and I asked if it was possible for you to explain quasi-static cavity resonance so that I could look smart at cocktail parties. So go. I can do it. Okay, actually, I actually had a visual demo oh. for this, but, but that got nixed because okay. it's, it's my fault. Okay, so, but the key here is uh, with what we call electromagnetic induction. If you have a magnetic field and that magnetic field changes in a loop of wire, it will generate a current. And there's no mystery there. We've done that. That's how radio receivers work. That's how uh, electric generators work. It's not a big deal. And that's how your, uh, your toothbrush charges. You know, if you have a toothbrush and you put in that little plate, mm -hmm. yep. Yep. then it, there's, a, there's a coil of wire, wire in the plate with, that makes a magnetic field. There's a coil of wire in the toothbrush that that field changes in, and it, it makes a current. Now, so that's not, that's not a problem. But the problem is that if you move that toothbrush away from the plate, even a little bit, the magnetic field decreases very, very fast. And so then you don't get any charging. And so that's bad. So that's not really wireless. It's just sitting on a plate, right? Right. So that's existed. Yeah, that, that exists with the Apple Watch, many Android phones. Yeah. But All what those it do the same thing. Now, but here, what this does, what this particular uh, room does, it's a room. It's not a device you put in a room. It's a room. So the, the walls are part of the, the device, and there's a pole in the middle. And they all set up to make a stronger magnetic field, changing magnetic field to the room. So that's how this works. Instead of being putting on a plate, you're essentially in a plate, and that plate is called a room. So it, it's, it's a clever way to make the magnetic field strong enough so that you could move around. Um, so they, if you see the video, there's, uh, they have these little coils of wire. When the magnetic field passes through those, you can get a current through that coil. But if the, if the magnetic field doesn't, then you don't get a current. So that's how this particular uh, setup works, which is still really cool. I mean, it could still have a lot of great applications. Um, but it's not like uh, it could be, you know, any, you could put it in your house without doing some severe modifications. So um, there were chairs in that room. Could I sit in that room and then still expect to live to talk about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could. I mean, because, you know, we have electromagnetic radiation all over the place. You know, I think another great example is a radio station. You know, they, they have these antennas that make magnetic fields too, but they have to have 10,000 watts, 50,000 watts, in order 100,000 watts, in order to be able to get a signal that's detectable you know, 20 miles away or however far it wants to work. And then that's just a detected signal. It's not powering the radio. So in this case, it is a strong magnetic field, but we, we have those all over the place anyway, and I don't, it doesn't really affect us probably. Probably. It could, though. But I know. I that's all we... I think you'd probably be okay. It's Disney. Disney doesn't <laughs> hurt people, right? Disney wouldn't hurt you with magnetic no, fields. Come on. No, they wouldn't do that. Uh, what about efficiency of charging? Um, I, when I've thought of the idea of a future where, you know, you don't necessarily have to put your device onto something or plug something in in order to charge it, where it's charged by the room. In my mind, I've considered that to be not the primary way that you charge your device, but rather if you happen to be sitting at home in your living room, you get like a trickle charge on your device that's better than nothing. Is that, or is it stronger in this case? No, and th this is strong. I mean, it power, that power is a fan. It depends on the size of your coil. So, if you, have, if you want to put a coil in a smaller phone, then you wouldn't get as much power. It's, it's about the size. Um, and then the orientation of it. So that's why they get this, they list it as 45 to 90% efficient or something. It can be very efficient if you have it in the right orientation. So it wouldn't be a trickle charge. But again, it's this special room. It's not, it's not the same room. It goes back to the room, yeah. the room that we okay. may never have. Well, so yeah, and, and, you know, the, the room's got metal walls and everything, so I don't know if you get uh, signals from outside the walls into the, into the room. So yeah. you're, maybe you're, you get awesome wireless charging, but no Wi-Fi. Would that be worth it? Mm, no. You have to have I guess you could put Wi-Fi in the room, but you can't get it from outside the room. Right, oh, right. Yeah. 
So Stoneweight in our chat room asks, why not a cabinet? Could you make just a cabinet and then you throw your devices in it, you shut it, and then yeah, forget it? Yeah, but if you're going to put your device in a cabinet, why not just put it on a pad? Mm, good point. Well, sometimes I've found that you have to like just place it exactly on the pad. Like I just want to throw it in there. It's a real problem. So you want better pads. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess that's what I want. Yeah. Okay, so my car, while I'm driving my car, I can charge my devices. Uh, is there ever, can you ever envision being able to use your phone to charge it? Like typing, using the energy of typing it to make it charged? Would that work? Yeah, there's a lot of things that say, okay, how could you, if you could get this continuous tiny trickle of charge, then it would be just a supplement to your normal charging. That's what Jason was saying, right? Mm -hmm. And so when people say, oh, what if you type on it, when you push on it, each push is like giving it a little energy. True, it does give it energy, but the mouth is it's just way too small. You know, the other idea would be charging with sound, ambient sound, again, way too small. Uh, solar, I think solar charging could possibly work. You know, you, the phone is a big flat surface anyway. It, it could get enough to at least, you know, feed you over until the next plug that you plug in. I think that would be one that would uh, possibly work. All right, so Disney, uh, obviously, uh, Disney Research, work, working on this. Uh, demonstrating, you know, that it's possible. What's the next step for this sort of technology? Are we working to towards a point to where our homes could could do this at some point? I mean, I I would say that's definitely possible if you build the home like that. But my what I feel that they're working on is a special room. You know, if this were a Disney World attraction, you could have this room, and now I have a light that I can just carry around or a fan that's not plugged in, so you can have possibly some unique Disney-like experience that's almost magic, the magic of Disney, you could call it, right? With it, where you don't have to plug things in, in that particular room. So it's kind of like a roller coaster of some kind. Yeah, or, or it house. could be, or, or the room of, of terror, one of those uh, haunted houses or something. Okay, but not something I'm going to have in my living room or in my house anytime soon. I, think I, I don't, it's not going to be soon, definitely. And maybe... We won't need it by the time you could get this. Maybe they're going to yeah. get better batteries, or um, maybe we'll decide that phones aren't the way we want to go, and no one's going to use phones anymore. And then no one cares about wireless charging. I don't know. I think the room of terror is the room that you have to plug your phone in in order to charge it, yeah, to be honest. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, that's where we're at now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Room of chair, terror every single day. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, Rhett, thank you so much for joining us. Next time we have you on, we'll see your whole visual uh, display of what you prepared. Uh, Rhett is an associate professor of physics at Southeastern Louisiana University and a contributor to Wired.com. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks again. Thank you, Rhett. <laughs> Take care. All right. Good night.